Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have Matt Jackson from hard rock band Post Profit. Hi, how you doing, guys? I, I just wanted to start out by like digging into some history. Uh, what age did you start playing guitar and what really got you into playing guitar? I'd probably say, cause guitar wasn't the first thing that I learned um, that I was interested in, but I would probably say around like five or six. And uh, I don't know, I started fiddling around with it. Didn't necessarily know how to tune it yet. And then uh, I asked uh, I asked my dad for like three chords and said thank you and ran off and then just locked myself away for a long time and then ended up you know learning how to play guitar and uh, it's honestly my favorite instrument to play so it ended up being to where it's like the instrument that I've played the most in like the last ten years so <laughs> okay. Um... What were some of the bands you listened to growing up? It started off with like a lot in the, my dad showed me a lot of eighties music and um, a lot of eighties rock and, and just all around stuff from the eighties and then going to the nineties. And then once uh, I started getting into rock, I was very into POD, which was like the, the first, like really first, like hard rock band that, really really got me into the harder stuff and so um from there on it just kind of grew from like pod to emory to double Rose prada under oath and you know it just progressively got heavier and heavier and you know all the people that i used to play music with in school and, and the bands that i were in the bands that i was in with them we were very much into that type of stuff. So my influences kind of like shifted more into that area. And um, from there on, it's just like, you know, anything heavy that I really, I really like, I like all types of music, but alternative is like my number one, I would say. Just, I've been around it so long, I've fallen in love with it. And there's so many things you can do with it. And so many bands that have been like inspiring to really kind of innovate the sound and take it and make it as their own. And so, yeah, um, very much into like the hard rock and alternative and now like the shoegaze and uh, I still listen to grunge and all that stuff. And I still listen to, I listen to like a lot of heavier stuff like uh, Norma Jean and um, Grey Haven. And there was another band that, uh, there's a band uh, out of uh, out of the UK called Foxjaw that I've been jamming a lot, and they are they are sick. Like they they've been one that I've been jamming like really heavily the last few months, and so uh, yeah, man, it's just it just uh, gets bigger and bigger when it comes to influences and listening to music and what I'm starting to like or what I have liked. It's just grown since then. So yeah. I could hear some of that grunge influence on your first album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like on Haunt Me, that that song sticks out to like sounding like old school grunge a little bit. Yeah. That the grimy bass 
part and the, the guitars and everything like it definitely has that vibe for sure you can you can definitely hear the grunge and a lot of that stuff off the first record for sure okay can you tell me how post profit formed uh yeah so um we literally we all um just were doing open jams at our uh, at our local bar that was the venue at the time to play at and host jams at when the scene was kind of booming in a sense, you know, and we really just kept playing and, you know, kept jamming and to like from like two in the morning and then having to wake up at six to go to work. And so, you know, and we just kept doing it and kept doing it and we really fell in love with it. And it was something that we were all very excited about to uh, to kind of venture into playing together and doing it for real and actually creating music instead of playing covers in a dive bar. But um, I am thankful for that because, you know, we really did all kind of hone in and try to make it sound the best we could. And from there on, it just really, you know, translated into writing and writing our own music. And it really kind of, it really helped as far as our sound and trying to figure out where we wanted to go. So, uh, but yeah, we literally just, um, and our, our bass player that is normally with us, uh, he's, uh, he's from California. We actually got in contact with him through our merch guy back in early 2023 and got in contact with him in about July or so. And, um, we, he literally just came in a week before our first tour, nothing more. And, uh, he really just hit it home from there on out. So, you know, he's, he's still killing it with us. He resides in California. So, um, you know, he's, he's fantastic and really fits in very well to what, um, what we're trying to accomplish and the music we love to play. And, you know, he's, he's right there with us on it. So it's, it's pretty awesome, honestly. Okay. How did you come up with the name for the band? <laughs> band name generator. <laughs> we actually, we booked a show we booked our very, very first show and we were so excited and about like, about 24 hours before the show, we had to stop and think for a second, like, whoa, what are, what are we going to have as a band name? And we really didn't know. So we had to sit around for a little bit and we really did go to band name generator and just typed it in. And, and, you know, we scrolled through like a good solid a hundred, almost 200 names, just scrolling and going through. And we've had, there were some, really bad ones on there. There were some questionable ones on there. And uh, we heard, we saw Post Profit and that just really kind of stuck with us. And so the rest is history with that. We didn't want to spend too much more time on trying to find a name, but at the same time, we were very excited how that turned out and the meaning behind it, which could be open for interpretation, but really just kind of going through that and and the name just it just stuck with us so you know now how does that app how does the app work for that do you have to put in like ideas and then it comes up with something or how does that work um it's really like I'm, most of the time it's like um and it's been a while since we've done it or, or since i've ever been on that and i was only on that site just to do that spe that specific thing but um, we ended up putting like names. Well, I wouldn't say names. We put up. They say um, guidelines like how many uh, words do you want in the name, and how long or short do you want it to be, and everything. And so they then, you know, after that, and then you just cycle through, and they just auto generate some names. And uh, yeah, that one was the one that after a while that we were sitting on for a second. We were like, I, I like this. And so we just, we went with it and kind of made it our own and uh, simply adopted the name. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, what city are you are you based out of? Uh, we're based out of like East Texas. Like, uh, we all live in different cities, which are like in the surrounding area. But we we all were in the Longview area whenever we first started. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're in Kilgore now. Our drummer is in, um, in another city that's like literally like 10 minutes away from us. And Charles is from LA. So <laughs> with him, with him coming in late to the fold, but he still, he also comes down and, and he enjoys it. And, you know, it was his first experience in Texas whenever he first came down. So, um, He's definitely enjoyed it and uh, definitely loves to come down. So it's been great. But yeah, I'd probably say like the it, it originated in Longview and uh, really just East Texas. Okay. I, I want to talk about a couple songs on the Self Defeater EP. Um, you have Cancer Culture. And I I noticed in that video that like you, the drummer and the guitar player, you all take like singing parts in that song. Can you just tell me a little bit about that song? Yeah. Um, well, with the whole EP, we really wanted to write some more stuff that was like in your face and punchy and more energetic and make you jump and everything. And, uh, Whenever that riff came to mind, we really just kind of went on with it. And that was one of those songs that really just kind of came together as we were writing it to where it was it was pretty easy. We kind of knew what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go with it. And then vocally, we really just wanted to show our ability throughout the whole band of us singing and um, having different parts going at the same time. And, uh, you know. I feel like that's something that we've really have honed ourselves into is, you know, musicians and really just kind of broadening our uh, horizons as far as, you know, trying different things with vocals and different vocals from different people in the band. And uh, yeah, that song really just it was just a one for an ener energetic banger to really just set off live and we didn't have a song really at before that point to where we could actually uh you know encourage people to jump because of the tempo and everything like that and so we really wanted to do like a jumping song and that song just came out and we really it really just fell into place honestly now towards the end of that song it got the ahas in there and I was I was wondering, have you ever tried that out on the crowd yet? Like, get them involved in that part where it breaks down? We haven't just yet. Really, mainly for, like, time purposes. I mean, that would be something that we definitely would enjoy doing. It, was just, it would just be the fact of uh, kind of lining it out and getting that ready in, into the set to where we can make it flow pretty easily and uh definitely something that i know we'll probably be trying to do at some point but um haven't gotten there yet you know a lot of it is just we're playing our songs and just really putting that energy out and for all the people that haven't heard us that are hearing us for the first time so now is that like a karate kid reference with swipe the leg Sweep the leg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know what really sparked that. I mean, we all love Karate Kid. I don't really know what sparked that. It's just, it was just the line that really, like, really just brought that intensity at that part. And so it was, it's just something that we just really kind of stuck with. It just sweep the leg, you know? It really kind of says it all, especially if you know Karate Kid, so.
Okay. The next song is Drug Emporium. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So that song was actually like, the name is kind of funny just because like whenever the idea of it was going, I was on my way to a, a place in our town called Drug Emporium. And so I, I had to go get something and then I came back and I was like, yo, Nick, we really, we should check this out. And from there on, we really like, we sat down and just wrote that song that day, you know? And uh, we just, I think it's kind of funny that, you know, as far as like, the name drug emporium and actually going to that place and like having that idea and just going with it. And it was just, you know, it was one of those go with the flow type of moments and it ended up going very, very well. I, I love that song. It's very fun to play live. It's got that two step energy, but it also has that heavy energy that a lot of people like. And so, you know, um, yeah, that song, it just fell into place, and it's fantastic. I love that song. So what is High school is over. Like when I was listening to it, you say high school is over. Look at us now. Now, what what I'm getting from the song, my interpretation of it is like you're done playing high school games and you're over all that stuff and you just want to move on. Mm hmm. And that's yeah, that that's what I would probably say a lot or that or just like, you know, kind of growing up and, you know. Because the, the way everything is these days, a lot of people like to do or like to just be involved in drama. And, you know, at a certain point, you get tired of dealing with that. And you really just want to just focus on yourself and bettering yourself and really going for what you're wanting to do in life and just kind of cut all the bullshit out. And, you know, it's OK to have fun. But also whenever you're doing something, you know, really getting into it and doing it for the right reasons and just all the other bullshit that's going on really doesn't matter. It doesn't hold really any weight. It's just attention and stuff like that or drama. And, you know, sometimes you just gotta say, fuck it and say high school's over. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I want to talk to, a little bit about you know you went on tour with nothing more how was that that was fantastic honestly there was uh it was kind of a new thing for us because before then we were playing the crowds at our shows like started getting like a little bit bigger and bigger you know you know and we're just excited to to be where we're at to play you know what i mean and uh when we got out there from the first to the last date of the Nothing More tour, the crowds were insane. So all that right there and trying to take that in, it was uh, it was an experience. You know, it, it felt really, really good. <laughs> like I feel like some of our best shows, I feel like that we've played, were on that tour because of like just the energy and the nothing more guys being amazing, their crew and staff being amazing. And as well as dead poet society and hire the hero, we you know just getting the full tour experience and making friends and, you know, enjoying the time you have and just getting to see your favorite bands play every night and enjoying it every night. You know, it, that, that was, that was awesome to really, 
see that take in. And the crowds were very energetic, which is pretty dope. We There's a lot of times we went out there, didn't know what to expect. And it would be people crowd surfing, a huge pit the size of the floor. And, you know, just really mind blowing. So, yeah, that, that tour was fantastic in every single way. Now, did they offer you like any advice or did you learn something while you were on that tour? Oh yeah. There was a, there was, there was a few things that we learned and, you know, we really did value their advice and, you know, being behind the scenes instead of, you know, just seeing them out in front and seeing what goes into the live shows. Like it really was just eye opening to, to see y'all and to talk to them and really just have a great time and have conversation, nerd out on gear as well. Like, you know, it was really cool to, to hang out with those dudes and get to pick their brains and everything. And then for them to watch our set and also give advice on just everything, you know, and what could work better and what, you know, lessons that they've learned that they're trying to help us with, you know, and anything, everything was just a learning experience, which was awesome because you can never, you can never stop learning new things. You know? so. What do you have planned for this year? We got a few dates right now with uh Jeff Poet Society. Um, everything else is still to be announced, you know, we're still trying to, you know, just keep on making music and keep the music train rolling. So we are currently writing for our next record. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what we've been doing, writing for our next record. We're gonna have some shows coming up. We'll have some stuff that'll be intermittently coming out throughout, you know, the year. And uh, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a new record out and, uh, be touring it and everybody listening to it and have some new music for everybody okay do you do you work with a producer or do you do it on your own we typically write and do everything on our own on the self-defeater ep we did work with machine the producer and uh that was that was fantastic we love machine he's fantastic he's mind his just how he does things and his mixes and everything, you know, they were fantastic. So it was great working with him. But um, majority of the time, like we really just kind of go back and forth and, you know, we have our studio here in our house. So we just, you know, come, if we got ideas, we come in here and just hash it out and kind of go from there and just build it from there. So. So do you think the next uh, work of art that you're going to do is going to be like a whole album or like an EP? I would imagine it to be a whole album. You know, we, we put out self defeaters like kind of like the stepping stone in between our first record and what we'll come out with next. And just kind of like that transition into uh, what we want to write for the next record. So, I'm uh, I'm very excited with how it's coming out right now. You know, we got some pretty pretty solid music in in the works right now, and just kind of gearing up for that. How can we get a hold of you? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, uh, Facebook is Post Profit. Instagram is Post Profit Official. Um, Twitter, I don't get on Twitter. I don't think any of us really ever get on Twitter that much, but I assume it's post profit. Maybe. I don't know. I can't really don't don't at me on that. <laughs> and um, of course on Spotify and all the major streaming platforms and everything. So yeah. Our whole catalog so far right now is up our first full our first full length and our EP are out right now. That's all the questions I have. Thanks for coming on the show today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Everybody go check out Self Defeater and uh, jam it. Enjoy it. And uh, just uh, follow the van. Keep up, with, uh, keep up with us and stay tuned for more updates. Thanks.
try to call me, but I guess I'm never home. I'm sorry if you think that I don't care, but maybe I don't wanna say what you need to hear. 